Alright guys, welcome to the little mini-series that I said we'd record. We started it the other day on Twitch, we did it live. We started a career mode on Pez Master League, but fully coach mode, which means we are not physically playing any games with the controller. What that means, basically, is we have to use tactics, substitutions, so on and so forth to win, it, win our games, rather than just beating the computer ourselves, which... To be honest, in most games, is quite easy anyway, but I don't see any challenge in that. So, we was on a live stream, and we decided, of three teams we had to pick, we wanted one with potential, but not brilliant team to, to begin with, so we could like make a few changes, buy a few players, sell a few players, and move forward and progress with that team. So, the three teams at choice were Everton, Tottenham Hotspur, and Liverpool. Um, and the people that in the Twitch chat decided to go with Liverpool because they've got a base of a team there, they've got a solid spine, there's not many people to change, um, but I am going to load up the Master League now and I am going to show you a few transfers that we have done already. Uh, we're probably about five or six matches in, what I'm going to do now is record every game and put them on obviously in like a playlist on my YouTube channel. So, just bear with me for a, f a couple of minutes or so while we just um, load into this window. Firstly, I want to just apologise if the screen res or the display or the actual visual appearance of the stream is bad. Uh, I'm trying to record uh, using remote play with OBS, so it's just a little bit of a test run really, instead of going to buy uh, an Elgato capture card to see if it's any good, to see if the quality is brilliant it's not going to be brilliant this one obviously the Elgato will be um, so we're going to load our latest Master League before going any further in case you haven't noticed or I haven't already mentioned the game we are currently playing is Pro Evolution Soccer 2017 right so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the account balance I believe and we're going to go to our transfers. So this is what we've done already. Um, as you can see, we, we released Arnold because our, tran our squad list was full to 32. And if your squad, squad list is 32, you cannot sign any more players. So we released him. And then we bought in Renato Sanchez on loan. Uh, we paid 1.5 million for that. But we're going to buy him. We've, we've had an option to buy because in PES... This is where there's like a dramatic difference between Pez and FIFA. The prices on Pez are a lot less than what there would be in the real life situation. If you do a learn to buy, whereas if you go and outright buy, the prices are more realistic. As an example, we were going to buy Antoine Griezmann. They wanted £102 million to buy him outright, whereas if we... Learn to bide, it was roughly half the price, so I don't know if that is a fault with the game, uh, but to be fair, it's probably the only fault that there is. As you can see, uh, we also got Jimenez, who is a centre-back, which means we sold Saka for £18.5 million, pounds, which is the fifth one down, I believe, on the screen. And then, as you can see, we got the big boy. We bought in Neymar on loan. Uh, we paid 15 million for the initial loan, and I think we have to pay 32 to buy him outright um, as well. So that's going to go up to a combined total of about 40 odd million, which is a steal for Neymar. Uh, obviously, as you can see, obviously we sold Milner as well because we're not really going to play the guy. Uh, so we've obviously replaced him. His replacement was obviously going to be. Um, his replacement was uh, Sanchez, his centre midfielder. Uh, as you can see also, we also got uh, Sané in from Man City. He's going to work on our right midfield with Mane. We're going to use them as alternates. We're going to swap them. As you can also see, we got rid of Mignolet because he's not going to play for us. Why keep him on our books, on our wages, when we can sell him? We also got rid of Lovren because I feel Lovren this year isn't going to cut it. I just felt we needed Jimenez. It was a toss-up between Laporte and Jimenez, but Jimenez was a year younger with the same overall rating, so obviously we can enhance his abilities with um, the training regimes that we can do. 
We also got rid of Emre Khan or Chan, sorry, should I say? So we got rid of him as well because I don't, I don't see him featuring in our, in our game. And we got rid of Lucas Lever. He's our most profitable player so far. We got rid of Lever. He's not going to play, so he's just going to be on our books for no reason. So we got rid of him. And personally, I wanted to keep Alberto Moreno, but Twitch chat insisted we got rid of him. Um, so we got rid of Moreno, and we bought in an absolute beast of a player who is going to be one to watch, uh, Rodriguez, who currently plays, I believe, for Wolfsburg. Uh, so we signed him from Wolfsburg. We haven't signed anyone officially yet. We've learned. And then we're going to go and buy them at reg um, in the next transfer window when January comes around. We don't have to do that. We could do it now because we've got enough money in the kitty to do that. Uh, obviously, we learned out um, Ilori because he's not going to play on our team. But we need to develop him and have him just doing training. Doesn't develop players very well. And as you can see, we did sign Sanchez. So we played originally one and a half million to learn him. And then we signed him for 11 and a half so that's roughly about 13 million or so so that's that and and just so we can see what we've got left in the bank we're gonna go to our negotiations and as you can see at the top of this you can't see at the top of the screen oh no uh, because the cam is there we need to reposition this camera at some point uh, basically what it says is you've got we've got 102 million pounds left in the bank and our salary budget which you cannot go over is 16.3 million a year uh, so that's our that's our update so far. Um, we're just gonna this is just gonna be a quick intro, and then the next video is going to be a match. So this is just keeping you up to date, telling you what we've done so far with the live Twitch. Uh, by all means, if you want to join in on the live broadcasts, all the information is down below. All the tags are Dan Three Hit You YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. If you've got any suggestions on what to change in this team, what to do, or even another career mode we should start with a different team. It doesn't have to be in the BPL, it doesn't have to be in any league that's English, it can be any league. As you can tell, we've got, everything is like, well, I wouldn't say officially licensed, but everything is um, official in terms of the logos, the kits, the players, everything like that, it's all legit. So we're gonna go and just take a brief look at the team because that's what we need to do next. Wrong one, wrong one, that's just a list of the team. We're gonna to go to the game plan, which is um, our outright team. Obviously, our next game is against Derby County. I'm assuming it's gonna be in a cup, obviously, because they're not in the Premier League. So as you can see here, we've got carriers and goal, and we're just gonna go through the stats, like, like what you can see on FIFA. Uh, the top one, what you can't actually see is goalkeeping. What I should probably do is make for the next video the camera a bit more translucent or maybe a bit smaller so it's just in the, into the top right uh, if it's a problem put a comment down below if you've got any suggestions on players as well put it down below as a comment or like I said Twitter is the best way to get in touch or if you see me live on Twitch by all means drop me a message through there drop me a DM anything like that DMs are open uh, so obviously as you can see the only one that you can't tell there is goalkeeping that's 89 rate and catching is 88 clearing 88 reflex is 90 and coverage Defensive prowess basically, uh, like covering the area, is 88. Uh, so we're going with Carrius, that's why we got rid of. Plus, his age, man, he's 23, so he's got a good 10 years of development, providing he doesn't want to leave at any point. So we're going with Ricardo Rodriguez, is playing left back. Jimenez is playing centre back, obviously. Look at the youth, man, 21. This is what we want. This, this was a bit of a topic as well in Twitch chat. We decided, well, I decided to keep. Matip, but I'm open to swapping and buying another defender. If anyone has any suggestions, maybe Laporte would go there. Uh, and then obviously we could swap Jimenez for Laporte because Laporte, I believe, is a left left sided player, so we could swap these two around like this. Then obviously we're keeping Nathaniel Klein. There's no reason to replace this right back. He's only 25, he's young, he's got a grit overall. I didn't want to change too much of the Liverpool spine, so we've kept Henderson playing at the centre midfield role. Um, Plus, he's young-ish. He's got a good four years before he starts to decline. He's at peak level now, I believe. It should say that somewhere. If it doesn't say it here, it says it in the transfer area. It tells you if a player is developing at peak or declining. And obviously, we've got this beast of a player from Bayern Munich, Renato Sanchez. Possibly, I wouldn't say the next Pogba, but I would say he's going to be borderline as good. Um, 
in just a couple of years. Um, as you can see here, he's just got a brilliant set of skills. 81 overall rating at 19 years of age. That's just outstanding. And as you can tell, we've got big boy Neymar. I say big boy, he's only tiny. Um, but there we go. We're playing him out of position at the minute because we need to get him more familiar with the left midfield role because I've changed the formation because I don't believe having three up top is going to benefit us. I think we need to more pack the midfield, have Neymar up and down, box to box sort of thing. You don't really need to see Neymar's stats. You know they're good. Um, we're keeping Coutinho. He's only 24, so... Why not? He's got an 83 overall rating, so I'm assuming we're going to progress at least one overall rating per year. By the way, we are not limited to State Liverpool. We are going to get offers for different teams, so when that comes along, by all means, pop them in the YouTube uh, chat boxes, comments down below, drop them on Twitter or on Twitch if you see me live. Let me know what team you want me to go and sign for as a manager. And as you can tell, we've got another uh, signing called Sane. He plays for Man City at the minute. He's a very, very young, upcoming player. He's got an amazing overall rating for a right midfielder at only 20 years of age. That is fantastic. But as you can tell, we're not we're not getting rid of our players. They're, they're staying here. Mane is staying because he's only 24 as well. 80, 80 overall rating. Surprisingly, Mane is less than Sane. Uh, so there must be some truth to that at some point. Maybe Mane is just not fully established himself as Liverpool, so they had to mark him down. Who even knows? Sturridge, I'm not overly keen on keeping Sturridge because I don't think we need to play with the centre forward. I'd rather play with a false nine, which is basically if you have one second striker, which would be Firmino, on his own. It plays as like a false nine, and then obviously your two wingers overlap and progress forward. So what I was thinking was if we sold... Sturridge, we could possibly buy in a decent striker or we just sell him and then we keep um, Origi. I'm going to get rid of Danny Ings because he's not going to play. It's pointless him keeping on our books. As you can see, we've got a few reserves here just in case of um, injuries. We're keeping Lallana. He's got a massive range of coverage that he can cover. Left wing, right wing, left mid, right mid, attacking midfield. So if he can come on as a sub and whenever we damn well please pretty much. Wide Aldum, we're going to keep him as well, I believe. It's up to the chat and the comments, obviously. But if anyone wants to get rid of any player, by all means, like I said, pop them in a the box. Ones with the most likes, the most comments, agrees, or the most replies to it. That is what we're going to do. I want this to be your career mode. Not my career mode, because I've got my own career modes. Your career mode. I want the people that are watching to decide what is going on. As you can tell, uh, we're keeping this guy. We're keeping Krizic as well because he's he's young. There's no reason to get rid of him. We might send him out on loan so he can develop because he's not going to play overly too much. The only time he's really going to play is if Henderson falls injury, falls to an injury, or even Sanchez comes off for a bit tired. But based on um, his stamina, he's not really going to get tired during a game. Uh, but things are looking well so far i think Firmino is outperforming sturridge so what we're going to do at the minute we're just going to i'm just going to briefly show you another stat page um it's manager team info club performance this season as you can tell from sturridge he has played seven games two goals two assists whereas Firmino has played eight games three goals one assist so at the minute Firmino is outperforming and he does seem to do a bit more in the game as well. He seems to run a bit more. The AI is it's 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 brilliant. It's just not overly brilliant when it's com versus com. But when you're playing each team, well I wouldn't say each team, there's a variable like a, a massive amount of teams that have got their own individual style of play. For an example, Barca and Arsenal are very, very similar, but the way the AI moves when you're playing on that that team is just brilliant. I do have FIFA. It's over there. I'm not playing FIFA because personally I think it's terrible this year. They've not really changed anything. Personally, I think the graphics are worse than last year. Whether that's because they've chased the Frostbite engine, who even knows. I just feel like most players look like cardboard cutouts. And um, I just don't want to play a game that I don't really enjoy. The, the way I would describe these games at present time... I would say FIFA is like 
Need for Speed. It's like an arcade style game. Whereas Pro Evolution Soccer this year is more like of a Forza or a Gran Turismo. It's more of a simulator. It's a bit slower. It's a bit more reactive. It's more realistic. It's so much more realistic than FIFA. FIFA is so so arcadey this year, and I just can't. I can't get to grips with it. I just don't. I don't enjoy playing it. What you also can't see here on the right hand side of your screen there was Team Spirit. That improves with every game, depending on how you play, how you win. And how your players actually perform and then you've got team strength that's like the overall rating of the team but the team spirit is what you want if you've got a really high team spirit which is basically similar to the chemistry in FIFA then there's more chance of you upsetting a bigger team than there is obviously you listen to them so thanks for watching this video next video is going to be a match uh, I've tried to keep it as short as possible but I've just realized it's turned over for about 16 minutes now so that's not really a short video however all the information is that we need if i've missed anything like i said drop a comment do anything like that twitter twitch youtube the best thing to do is twitter drop me an instant dm or even just a normal message i'll get your message straight away from my phone but put a comment on this put a like share subscribe all all of that good stuff so thank you very much for watching and the next video will be a recording of a game com versus com coach mode only so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time cheers guys